Hey folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I'm back clarifying another thing as I saw enough comments about it in one of the previous videos uh, about people saying, well, what do I get to keep if I take a lineage? The answer is nothing if it's not covered in the ancestral legacy section of that particular lineage. But enough people are really like, oh, I can't wait to be a changeling dampier and I can change my form and I'm a vampire. Doesn't work like that. I thought I had explained that in the v previous video when I did lineages. I guess I didn't, which is fine. We're going to make a clarifying video right here. So there's a whole sidebar right here. I'm going to zoom in for you. What happened to me? The lineages provided in this section represent a physical and more importantly, folks, a magical transformation that alters you in fundamental ways. You can still appear as you once were, but you've changed in significant ways that might overwrite your once physical or magical capabilities. Very good case in point right here. A dragonborn who becomes a dampier, for instance, loses their connection to their draconic ancestry as the deathless power of vampirism, vampirism surges through them. Once able to exhale destructive energy, the dragonborn now feels a powerful hunger inside and their bite is now able to drain life. Some racial traits might remain after you gain a lineage, a poss uh, possibility captured in the ancestral legacy trait. Keep this in mind when you explore the details of how you change after gaining a lineage subsequent to character creation. Scrolling down to the lineage, they all say the same things. If you replace a race with this lineage, you can keep the following elements of that race. Any skill proficiencies you gained from it and any climbing, flying, or swimming speed you gained from it. Therefore, that means if you have an improved walk speed, it doesn't transfer. It only says any skill proficiencies, which is at the most two, pretty much for any existing race, is they usually either give you one and something else, or some of them will give you two, and then any climbing, flying, or swimming speed. So again, depending on what you choose, for example, a lizard folk gets a swim speed and also has access to two skill proficiencies. You get to keep those skill proficiencies and the swim speed. You don't get to keep the lizard folks ability to gather materials. You don't get the lizard folks bite. You don't get the lizard folks ability to hold their breath. If you're a changeling, you get, I think, two skill proficiencies, but you can't change your form. One thing that several people have brought up that I do think is a valid point, why can I keep the skill proficiencies I gained, but I can't keep the weapon proficiencies or the armor proficiencies I've gained? For example, if I'm a dwarf, and I become a Dwarf Dampier, I drop my resistance to poison, I drop my knowledge of my ancestral smithing, either smith tools, brewer's tools, or masonry tools, I drop my, uh, all of my Dwarven, you know, uh, I drop stone cunning, uh, if I choose a lineage that doesn't have dark vision, I don't believe the Reborn has dark vision, so if I choose to be a Reborn Dwarf, I lose my dark vision, um, I don't know if Hexblood has dark vision as well. Yeah, so if I choose to be a Dwarven Reborn, I lose my dark vision. I'd lose all of the ancestral weapon proficiencies I have. If I happened to be a Mountain Dwarf that got uh, light and medium armor proficiencies, I would lose those. If I was a Hill Dwarf and had that plus one extra hit point, I lose that. The only thing that you keep as per the sidebar that I just showed you here is what's de what's denoted in the ancestral legacy section which is any skill proficiencies you've gained or a climbing flying or swimming speed you gain and then it follows up and says if you don't keep any of these elements which you can obviously choose to just forego these and not get them uh you can choose uh any two proficiencies of your choice so for example were you an elf uh dampier an elf will get proficiency in perception as part of being an elf. So if you think about it from a purely mechanical standpoint, you could keep your elven proficiency in perception and nothing else, unless you happen to be a sea elf and get swim speed from it. Or you could forego, like let's say you're a wood elf. Wood elf gets an improved walking speed. That doesn't transfer here. You could keep your proficiency in perception and that's it. Or forego keeping your ancestral proficiency in perception and get proficiency in two skills, one of which could be perception. So there's a thought process there, and there's definitely an option for silliness and kind of redundancy if you don't pay attention. But yeah, you don't get to keep anything else, which does seem like, 
we got the example like a dragonborn can no longer have a breath weapon they also are no longer resistant to the damage type they were once resistant to they get whatever they get from this i do think again that it is interesting that i could keep my skill proficiencies but i could lose my tool proficiencies and my weapon proficiencies i realize that's just as ludicrous as losing a breath weapon as a dragonborn but if i can keep skills what is part of this magical transformation that i can retain skill knowledge but I can't retain weapon knowledge. I don't know. Um, so I thought that that was something. But another thing that I thought of, and I did, I'll put a link to the tweet if you guys want to go blow or try to blow this tweet up. I reached out to Jeremy Crawford again in another tweet for clarification. We don't know about ages, right? So in all of the player's handbook and any of the other you know books that have races in them, they give you an age range, right? We know elves live longer than humans, for example. But one thing we know from that sidebar that I just told you about is we are leaving everything behind and it's a magical transformation. We're leaving all of that behind in favor of our new race's stats minus anything from the ancestral legacy, which again, skills or additional forms of movement, not age. But nowhere in any of these lineages is there a section that tells you what the age range is for your new race now it might be immortal right you might just not die and that's that but it doesn't say that and that's my problem because i think a lot of people don't have a problem with a dampier living forever because you're a vampire and like people have in their head you're an undead you can live forever and a reborn is kind of like a construct frankenstein monster in a way it doesn't have to be that but let's use that as an example so in that aspect, well, I'm kind of like a robot, so I might live forever. But if I'm a Frankenstein patchwork creature, do I only live as long as my body parts that are stitched together survive before they fall apart? And the Hexblood becomes a fey creature. But as I've stated before in the past, there are no set specific rules for creature types. So there's nothing that says anywhere that a fey creature is unlimited life. They might be long lived. They might be short lived. I don't know. But that's my problem is it just it would be a simple thing to tell you what the ages are. And I when I looked through this to see if there was anything, because normally when you look at a specific race, it will tell you, you know, your creature type, your size, your speed. And you typically it's somewhere in there. There's an age range. So let's go ahead and go to the rules and let's go look up uh, satyrs. Satyrs were released in Mythic Odysseys of Theros, which was recent, and they are considered a fey creature. So if we scroll down, look at this. Ability score increase and then age. Right after ability score increase is age. And it says they uh, mature and age at the same rate as humans, but they are fey creatures rather than humanoid. So that right there is an example of a fey creature that you could play as a character that ages as normally as a human. So nothing is different even though they are not humanoid. If we scroll down, we can probably find through Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica... The centaur, which is also a fey creature. Now, again, these both happen to be creatures outside of the Forgotten Realms, but their age is, again, the same rate as a human, but they are also fey. So there's no answer. That's my point, is there's no right or wrong answer at this point because there is no answer. But that seems like an oversight that should have been rectified. And I, not that I'm going to say that I have anything to do with this because I certainly don't. But this was something that I actually, and you can go back and watch the survey video that I filled out for those lineages, that I specifically called that out in my survey response is that there's no clarification on ages. A lot of people in the comments on that video said, well, yeah, it's just because you're a vampire, you're undead, you're immortal. And to a degree, people could make the argument that when you were doing dual typing and you were undead and humanoid, sure, maybe you could make that argument, but I'll go back to my original point there's nothing that says that undead live forever in 5e because there's nothing tied. There are no specific rules for creature types. And that's actually even spelled out in the lineages and anything like that where it talks about creature type. It specifically says there are no specific rules about that. If we were to go and look, I'll show you right here real quick before we close this out. Here's a list of the creature types in alphabetical order, aberration, blah, blah, blah. These types don't have rules themselves but some rules in the game affect creatures of certain types in certain in different ways. So it flat out tells you that like just because you're an undead, it doesn't provide you any specific set of rules. 
So we can't argue that because you're a Fey, you can live forever. And remember, the Dampier and the Reborn are humanoid. In theory, they're no different than any other humanoid race. All I want to know is how long I'm going to live. It's, you know, I know that that may possibly never come up, but there are mechanics and things in the game that can magically age you. And if you magically age a lot, it could kill your character, right? If there's something that has a potential, if you the DM rolls high to age your character 40 years and you're a goblin and your lifespan's 35 years, you're dead, right? Realistically, in theory, your character is dead. We don't know. So anyway, just a little bit of clarification for folks who were curious about how the lineage system works to get that out of the way. And then a little bit of a rant as to why no age information. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know how you think it should be handled. Um, is it weird to ask for errata at this point? The book's not only it hasn't even been out for a week and we're already finding things that maybe there could be some clarifications provided on. One being the whole material component versus somatic component issue regarding the spiritual focus piece of the um, of the spirits bard. We already made a separate clarification video discussing the Dampier bite. I'm making a video clarifying the lineages and the ancestral legacy, and I might have to make a separate video clarifying the spiritual focus, but I haven't gotten any feedback from Wizards of the Coast. Not that I'm expecting that I would. The best I can do is tweet out and hope for an answer. Not that it's going to provide me anything of benefit, but it's the best option we have until we get formal errata in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.